By the way, it's a uh, coat and tie. <laughs> I got some shorts and a t-shirt with me that we kept. So I hung up, I said, sure, we'll be there. Gosh, what are we going to do? So we actually invaded his closet that he probably hadn't been in in quite a few years in the studio. And my friend and I were putting on his clothes. None of it had matched. You know, it was a match, whatever. We got a jacket, we got a tie, a shirt. Was pants. I think the only thing I was wearing was my own work. Shoes, socks, and my own pants. So we kind of looked like rodeo clowns. <laughs> coat and tie on and that's what was important so we followed his instructions to what train to take where and down the street and we're coming down to the Gramercy Park and into the right and into the building and up the steps to where I was going to meet my father and nobody was there so we sat there quietly as people walked by and looking at us kind of oddly we waited there for 30 minutes, close to 60, and this was the time I did that. I didn't have a cell phone. I walked around and found some place. Excuse me, sir, I'm here to uh, meet my father. I wanted to play this. Sir, uh, I don't know who Lee Moore is, and this is not the players. <laughs> Thank you. unknowingly, often quite knowingly. One of the first showings I ever had of his humor, we all lived in the same building on West 93rd Street. And Lee was living upstairs, I was living on the second floor. And it was in the 1980s. And boom boxes were all the rage then, and carrying them on your shoulder and just like, just blasting them, and we hated them a lot. <laughs> and one night, the window flew open, and you hear in Lee's stentorian voice, Stop! You're poisoning the night! <laughs> love of acting, singing, and theater, Leslie, delighted me always. <laughs> oh, Cindy, my dear, it's the 38th year since we started this birthday gambit. But you drive me insane. You simply won't gain. You refuse to catch up, dumb damn it! <laughs> I, I wrote the poem, and I called it Ode to Lee. And in, in Lee's fashion, I, it's spelled O W E D. Rakaseka <laughs> is its name. One more home became theirs, an airy high rise, Castellinaria on Riverside Drive. <laughs> Lee loved cats, that's well known. He had three pairs plus one. Midnight and Misty, Mario and Manon, Marcello, Musetta, and one more, up home in Connecticut, Mittens, a neighbor in residence. They all loved his deep, rumbly voice and warm presence. Weeks ago, when the sands through the hourglass had run, Lee taught all of us how taking leave should be done. Reciting the bard in his last hours, what style? He had Larry Olivier beat by a mile. <laughs> Mr. Booth was no doubt hovering near as he parted. 
to ensure his heavenly journey got started the right way with laurels and white robe to grace him as past players crowded around to embrace him. <coughs> Goodbye, my dear friend. I will miss you. It's true. In heaven, they're richer because they have you. If you can, while I sleep, say a poem in my ear. When our birthday comes, then I'll wake with a smile, knowing you've been near. When our birthday comes round, I'll miss hearing you say, Happy birthday! In your booming, actory way. <laughs> so if you can manage, pop down from above, and I'll sing it to you one more time. <laughs>
O cari monti del mio paese, vali ridente e pianure estese, vorrei cantarvi tante canzoni, o dell'Italia e tante regioni. Il monte è Veneto e Lombardia, Liguria e Emilia, Toscana mia. Il Marche e l'Umbria vorrei vedere, l'Abruzzo, il Lazio e le costiere. Della Campania, tutte in giardino, Puglia, Calabria, Lucania, Antica. Sicilia d'oro, di fiori amica. Sardegna bruna di là dal mare. Oh, vi potete tutti ammirare. Verdi paesetti, cite gentili, statue superbe, quadri, memorie di, di eroi famosi, di antiche glorie. Lo vi saluto con tutto il cuore e della patria sento l'amore. For opera, Italian culture, the Italian language, and last but not least, Italian food. <laughs> it is a friendship that started in the mid 90s and has grown deeper through the years. We have been.
which I was so happy to be asked, uh, saying that, you know, David, you've known Lee perhaps longer than anyone here at the Players, and it's true, because Lee and I first met around 1867, <laughs> <laughs> shortly after the Civil War. And oddly enough, we've crossed paths many times, unwittingly, but we did cross paths, and shows like Another World and Dying Light, as the world turns, and even in the film Arthur. So we fast became friends when we joined the club back in 1988. <laughs> uh, my name is Mark Barron, and ironically, to follow that joke, I am also the shepherd of the lambs. <laughs>
stage. But it wasn't until I heard Lee deliver the most famous line in Hamlet, which is what? Yes, what is it? Thank you very much. Yes, of course. You get good marks for that. Um, it wasn't until he delivered that line in such a way that made me aware that Lee didn't just throw light on the text, he illuminated it. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to show you, I mean, I'm going to speak, but it's lovely. And I think it speaks to the enlisting. It's all I have to bring today, this and my heart's side. This and my heart, and all the fields, and all the meadows wide, be sure you count. Should I forget some, the sum could tell this and my heart and all the bees that in clover dwell. Thank you. The eternal road is long, and love really has no end. I awoke knowing love knows no bounds. As long as we remember thee, his spirit is still around. <coughs> so lift a glass. I had recently come out the other side of corporate filmmaking in Hollywood, and due to this experience, I uh, admittedly had become bitter and lost my taste for the hardships involved in it all. I felt 
kind of old, tired, and unenthusiastic about the whole thing, and I didn't know what I was going to do next. So when uh, I met with Lee, he told me about his vision for his film, um, his passion for this place where we're all at now, and for and his admiration for its founder, Edwin. Um, it kind of sparked a new fire in me, and I immediately went to help him make this film. Um, <laughs> Um, hi, uh, you, you probably guessed, um, judging by where I am in the lineup, that the character Willem Scripps uh, doesn't enter till the fifth act of Lee's story. <laughs> and I hear from the stage in here this voice going, I must find this rabbit, <laughs> filling all the way out to the hallways. Well, we got to know each other, and whenever he would see me, coming into the building or something, he'd come up behind me and he'd go, Maximilian Alexander St. James! You know, well, one time there was a woman out in front, and I just got these glasses, this is last spring, and he starts to call out my name, and this woman walks up and goes, oh, is this the club with celebrities? And he says, indeed it is, madam. And she's shaking my hand, said, how do you do? I said, how do you do? And she says, um, are there any celebrities here? And Lee, seeing me put on these glasses, says, why don't you know? You just shook hands with Roy Orbison. I don't know. I don't know what it was. But I read in a room, yes, and Cindy Evers was my roommate. Student at Juilliard, uh, Manhattan School of Music, we're both studying opera, we're trying to make our mark in the city, we were young single gals, and lo and behold, several years later, she meets this handsome guy, Lee Moore, and Leslie was head over heels. I remember the first time I met him, I was like, whoa, Leslie, you did very good, you did a good job there. So, um, at any rate, our, our careers took their own paths in their own, their own various ways. I ended up marrying a Broadway actor named Michael McCarty, and we kind of did our own things. We, we lost touch a little bit for a few years, and then my, uh, my husband wanted to do what most actors want to do, go to L.A., do the L.A. thing. You know,
actor's notes to the players. Speak this speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it, you trippingly on the tongue. But if you mouth it, as many of our players do, I had as least the town crier spoke my lines. No, do not saw the air too much with your our hands like this. But use it all gently, for in the very tarred tempest, and as I may say, whirlwind of your passion, you must acquire and beget a temperance that may give it smoothness. Oh, it offends me to the soul to hear a robustious, periwigged, painted fellow tear a passion to tatters, to very rags, to split the ears of the groundlings, who for the most part are capable of nothing but inexplicable dumb shows and noise. I would have such a fellow whipped for our doing termagant. In our Herod's Herod, pray you, avoid it. Now hearing Lee do this famous speech is how I got to know him when he first joined the Players Club in 2001. And he came down to see what the group, Plays by Players, was all about. And what do you deal just as though you were here? Purple shadows start to welcome the dark. I'll take that same old stroll we took through the park, and I'll cling to you, dear, just as though you were here. So you mustn't fear. Distance and time may finally tear us apart. The farther you go, the longer you stay, the deeper you grow in my heart. Each night before I wander off into sleep, I'll bring to light the tears I buried so deep And I'll kiss you, my dear Just as though you were here The last poem that Noel Coward ever wrote is, I think, a beautiful one, and I'd like to share it with you.
When I have fears, as Keats had fears, of the moment I shall cease to be, I console myself with vanished years, remembered laughter, remembered tears, and the peace of the changing sea. When I feel sad, as Keats felt sad, that my life is so nearly done, it gives me comfort to dwell upon remembered friends who are dead and gone, and the jokes we had and the fun. How happy they are, I cannot know, but happy am I who love them so. Wow. Oh, don't put your daughter on the stage. <laughs> Don't put your daughter on the stage. The profession is overcrowded and the struggle is pretty tough. And admitting the fact, she's burning to act that isn't quite enough. She has nice hands to give the wretched girl her due. But don't you think her bust is too developed? I repeat, Mrs. Worthington, sweet Mrs. Worthington, don't put your daughter on the stage. Regarding yours, dear Mrs. Worthington, on Wednesday, the 23rd. Although your baby may be keen on a stage career, how can I make it clear that this is not a good idea for her to hope? Dear Mrs. Worthington, is on the face of an absurd. Her personality is not, in reality, inviting enough, exciting enough for this particular sphere. Don't put your daughter on the stage, Mrs. Worthington. Don't put your daughter on the stage. She's a bit of an ugly duckling, you must honestly confess. And the width of her seat would surely defeat her chances of success. It's a loud voice, though it's not exactly flat. So need a little more than that to earn a living wage. On my knees, Mrs. Worthington, please, Mrs. Worthington, don't put your daughter on the stage. Now don't put your daughter on the stage, Mrs. Worthington. Do not place that child upon the stage. Though they said at the school of acting, she was lovely as Peer Gint. <laughs> I'm afraid of the whole, and as a new role would emphasize her squint. She's a big girl, and though her teeth are fairly good, she's not the type I ever would be eager to engage. No more buts, Mrs. Burlington, nuts, Mrs. Burlington. Don't put your daughter on the stage. Now don't put your daughter on the stage, Mrs. Burlington. Don't put your daughter on the stage. We'll look at her bandy legs and she'll prove she hasn't got a chance. In a district to which the son of a bitch can neither sing nor dance. She's a vile girl. <laughs> and uglier than mortal sin. The look of hers put me in a tearing bloody rage. That sufficed, Mrs. Worthington. Christ! Mrs. Worthington. Don't put your daughter on the stage. <laughs> Uh, Jeffrey, are you doing a, um, oh, that's, oh, I'm sorry, we're doing the hair poetry now? Oh, okay. Lee, um, Lee, I need, um, Leslie, I need you up here, because it's not a number that I really know as much as you do, but it's Bill Vitt and Sullivan, of course, a great. Right, I'll say a little so, something. Please um, do. This seems a little bit from Glenfield, but um, I have to tell you that Lee is Thank <laughs> you. 
um, several movies, not just the Edwin Booth movie, but several movies, um, and endless other productions that we were in together. Uh, but most of all, he was, he was um, everything to me. And uh, I would like, after I sing this, for all of you to join in with me. Um, if you, well, everyone knows this song. So.